We declare that the kingdom of God is here. We declare that the kingdom of God is here. We declare that the kingdom of God is here. Among us. Welcome back to the second half of our teaching series T3, Teach These Things on the Kingdom of God. And we're going to be looking at some more important passages of the scriptures which reveal the understanding of the Kingdom of God that we've been given. It should affect our lives enormously. I just sang, it wasn't a spontaneous song, some of you may recognise it, it was from uh, Make Way by Graham Kendrick. And people used to sing, we declare that the kingdom of God is here, as we were marching down the road. Which, I remember uh, that, yes. Yeah, see, see, 1986, <laughs> that song was written, I remember the album coming out. But uh, throughout, through the whole Make Way thing, there were a lot of very kingdom emphasised mm -hmm. passages. And that was because the, the Make Way musical was, came out of, it's Graham, Ker Graham Kendrick was the creative force but the theological and biblical driving force was Roger Forster mm -hmm. from uh, the Ixus, Ixus Fellowships in London, who have always had a very strong emphasis on the Kingdom of God. So, let me take you back to, back to 1980-81. And I had uh, started reading through Kingdom of God passages. And uh, do you know what I did? I um, I made a list of passages which were really clear. I, I did a few lists. I think lists are really good when you're doing big Bible studies. So I had uh, passages which indicated the kingdom was present. I then listed a lot of passages which indicated the kingdom of God was future. And then I listed a lot of passages which could be taken either way. That was helpful. Then I remember listing passages which I couldn't understand. And there were about ten. I couldn't understand. And over the years they've notched down a bit, but there's still some passages I don't really understand. And I think that's good. And I used to get irritated with people who, when I would learn stuff later on by reading books or listening to people, they would force passages into a scheme or a pattern. And you'd end up making it fit into something which you didn't feel comfortable with. And so those of you who, who either do or intend to do serious Bible study, let the Bible be what the Bible says. Don't make it fit. One of the, one of the schemes that I used to embrace was dis dispensationalism. And I used to make, and lots of the writers used to make passages squeeze into this. Just leave them alone. Let them be what they will be. And if at the end of the day you're left with things sticking up, and you're not quite sure where they fit, let them stay there. Leave them alone. Let them be a challenge to you and your understanding. It'll make you, for those of us who have any presumption to teach or to lead or to influence, um, I think we have to be so careful that we don't force uh, our understanding onto the actual text. If we allow the text to speak to us, it'll make us much more humble. Um, and less willing to uh, be rigid in some of our understandings. And be also aware that these things are big and difficult and we need to grow in our understanding before we can possibly hope to eliminate the list that we don't really understand. Mm -hmm. Actually making a list of things which you don't understand is an exercise in humility in itself. Mm -hmm. um, the Kingdom of God is central. Central, should be central, that's what I should say. And the fact that the kingdom of God has come should be something that we all appreciate. When I was doing that study, uh, I came across a number of verses, but one stuck, stuck out to me. And it was the one that's there. It says, it's Luke eleven twenty. It's also Matthew 12, verse 28. 
But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, and it's the Spirit of God in Matthew, then the kingdom of God has come to you, or has come upon you. If I, if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you, or come upon you. And it sort of makes sense, doesn't it? If the kingdom of God is real, <coughs> and it's, it's authority, and it's, it's King Jesus being in charge, if you like, then this idea of a kingdom bumping up against an, another kingdom sort of makes sense. And the healings, and particularly the demon stuff in the Gospels, as it says there, is the classic clash of kingdoms. That as Jesus came, the kingdom of God has come upon you, as he confronted demonic activity in people's lives, cast the demons out of them, the king, the rule of God came. The man was found in his right mind, um, clothed and in his right mind, rather than uh, making himself naked, harming himself, and generally making a nuisance of himself around the countryside. Um, and I remember thinking to myself in 1981, it could have tipped it in 82, sorry to talk about these things if they were yesterday, they were a long time ago, but they, they are really fresh to me, because they've shaped my life. Um, that's why sometimes I refer to a particular period of time when I did a study, because it shaped my life. It changed the way that I teach and understand things. And I remember thinking to myself, well, if I am going to seek to proclaim and communicate the good news of the kingdom of God, the, the lordship of Jesus, um, then it's inevitable that I'm going to cast out demons. So I, okay, that's fine. I didn't go rushing around the streets. Where are the demons? Come to me and I will give you pain and agony. Um, 1985, I was sitting in the front room and I just started, I just started uh, leading a foundation course um, about repentance, faith, baptism, baptism, the Holy Spirit. And there was I in a house in Westland Avenue. And all of a sudden, this woman in her 30s as we were going to talk about the Holy Spirit, started screaming in this front room. And I remember, no one knew I was thinking this. I remember thinking, ah, okay, I've been expecting this. <laughs> because that's what the Bible says. And um, all I remember doing at the time was, um, uh, was just saying, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her now. And she stopped forward. And I just wished to myself, why couldn't all the demons I've ever cast out be that easy? Because they're often more stubborn than that. But in this particular instance, God was gracious and out came the demonic and uh, our life was changed. Mm -hmm. But far from being something that we should shy away from, it is something which is more than anything else the evidence of the rule of God being mm -hmm. proclaimed and being lived. But I'll just say this as an aside and we'll perhaps look at it when we do gifts of the Spirit in a few months' time. But there is so much bad practice around that area. There's so much flaky, unbiblical, um, experiential uh, rubbish that circulates that it gets in the way of doing it biblically. And, um, but w what the net effect is, is that pretty well nobody casts out demons anymore. Well, they do, but it's quite rare. Um, and I went on to do about 65. And I do far less these days, I haven't done for one for a little while. Because I have to say, I find them hard work. But I also have learned that there are other ways as well to get demons out of people's life. And there are varying ways to apply the kingdom of God, the rule of God, to people's lives. But I, I just want to say that the kingdom, the casting of demons is evidence that the kingdom is not just to come, it is here. And it's like when we pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It's a little bit like, Roger Forster explains it this way. He says, it's a little bit like, Lord, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's like reaching out and grabbing a piece of the rule of God. And... Um, 
for me, even the way I approach healing, I, I find the idea, the paradigm, the, the, the overall understanding of it being the kingdom of God is much healthier, so much healthier than just repeating by a structure healed or um, uh, believing that everybody's going to be healed. Because what dominates my thinking is the kingdom of God, not healing. The focus for me is not just healing, it is the rule of God. And I know that the ultimate healing is going to be in the resurrection. It's the resurrection of that individual. All we have in the meantime are temporary things. Lazarus died, even though he'd been raised from the dead. All the people who'd been healed died of something else, even the ones in the New Testament. Because the kingdom of God has come, but has not yet fully come. And we will not physically live forever until it has fully come. And so when we teach about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God, which is what it says at the end of uh, Acts, where Paul, it says, he, he proclaimed uh, the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and as we do that, we are, uh, and we, and we, as we pray for healing, I'm praying that the, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And But I'm aware that some people don't get healed because the kingdom hasn't fully come. So I'm not going to make them feel guilty and say you didn't have any faith. Mm -hmm. That's a shameful thing to do. Mm -hmm. I've heard people do that a lot. Um, if, any, if, I'm gonna, if anybody's not going to have faith, I'm going to tell them I don't have enough faith. Mm -hmm. um, but what I will, I, I, I try and teach into that and say, you know, um, I'm going to use my faith to reach out to God. Um, and even though we don't get everything now, and there's more to come, I believe that, that the kingdom can come in your situation. So I'm giving them faith, but also helping them to understand it's here, but not yet. Mm. You know, I, th I think it's a much healthier way to approach the whole healing thing. I uh, recommend a book at this point. Mm. Um, there's a number of good books about healing. If someone says to me, what's the best book to read about healing? Power Healing by John Member. What's the best book um, about deliverance? Power Healing. John Wimber. But um, this is a good one, Bruce Collins, Jesus Gospel, Jesus Way, and it uses the kingdom paradigm, the kingdom uh, teaching in the New Testament um, for all sorts of things. How did Jesus do his ministry, theme of the kingdom in the Bible, why is faith so important, the impact of doubt, uh, will of God. Very good book, I'd recommend you get it. All right, can't have this one, show off. <laughs> Um, and if you, if you want a book which uses the kingdom as the overarching idea of the Bible, which it is, and helps you to understand temple, land, people, priesthood, sacrifice, all of these things uh, can be understood through the, the glasses, if you like, the Jesus glasses of the New Testament, kingdom glasses, if you like. This is a good one, Gospel and Kingdom by Graham Goldsworthy. You can get a, a really cheap edition for $1.99. Uh, you can come and have a look at, at these. Um, all, all very good books. Um, <coughs> right. This is a diagram, a famous diagram. Can you see the peering before your very eyes? Um, we are on the right-hand black line. Got that? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like... Um, I'm going to do this now. Right. That's that bottom line. Mm -hmm. And then there's the top line. Um, that's what it was like. In the Old Testament, there was this age and there was the age to come. The day of the Lord was sort of slap bang in the middle and there was it was fairly simple uh, there was just these two things but what has happened in the New Testament is this it's like as if it's not a time slippage as such, such but Jesus has come and has pulled forward the, the kingdom of God into the present age so every time he he was the ultimate tomorrow person. He was the 
uh, I won't say ultimate X-man, but he was the presence of the future. Because Jesus said, he did, what he didn't say was the kingdom of God is within you. He said the kingdom of God is among you. That's the meaning of the word. He was the embodiment, the very living embodiment of the rule of God. And he made the ages slip like that. And we are now in that bit. Where the, where the age to come has broken in and um, the old age still continues. We, uh, there's a great verse that the whole of creation is longing for the sons of God to be revealed. Because the old creation is still under bondage to decay, as the New Testament talks about. S still bad stuff happens, death occurs, illness happens, things don't work properly. But there is also this presence of the kingdom of God, which hasn't come in its fullness, but is definitely here. And um, the, the trigger, imagine there will come a time when someone will blow a whistle. Imagine the great referee of the universe holding a whistle. And when he sees the people of God, who's that? Who are the people of God? He only has one. We are. We are. We are. Jew and Gentile together in the body of Christ. We are. And when the, the people of God, as a, a bride, are ready for the husband, and the people of God who are also described as a city, which is like a bride, Revelation 22, is ready, coming down from heaven, dressed as a bride for her husband. When, when the, the, the people of God, which are like a body, which is, and the head is Jesus, when the body matches the head, someone's going to blow a whistle. Because it's time then for the sons of God to be revealed. And we who have lived in this age, with our broken bodies, but yet with our faith in the rule of God, suddenly things will change and the full presence of the future will come in the, um, uh, what we would know as the second coming of Jesus. And in this image, the only, the only thing I don't like about the diagram, it's got the age to come in blue. And it looks like that's up in heaven. Mm. And that we're down on the bottom, and well, that's not the case at all because the kingdom of God is here. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you may have questions about this, right? So we're praying for the kingdom of God to come on earth, the will of God to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if you want another synonym, if you like, a similar meaning, same meaning as, as kingdom of God, it's the will of God. I mean the same thing. And that, that's what's called Hebrew parallelism. Um, the kingdom of God will come, the will of God will become the same, same thing. Two ways of saying the same thing. So we pray for the kingdom of God to come. Then it says in Revelation, um, you have made us to be a kingdom and priests to, anybody know what the next phrase is? Reign on the earth. Reign on the earth. And um, uh, in my own understanding, I was a really enthusiastic <coughs> end time preacher, and uh, we're doing end times in two months' time. We're doing heaven and hell next time, and end times a week after, the month after. I was really, when I was younger, I was really enthusiastic, but I had this idea that we're all going off, we're all going away, and we leave the old earth behind, and it's all going to get <coughs> smashed up to pieces, and, and all that. Well, that isn't the case at all, at all because we, uh, we wait for the time of the restoration of all things. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth, uh, a renewed heaven and a renewed earth. God will not let his creation just decay. Just as we, if you like, when we're born again, we are the first bits of God's new creation. Right. Sorry, Jesus was the first bit of God's new creation because he came back from the dead. Anyway, okay. So I like that diagram, but there are practical applications of our understanding of the kingdom. Some of these are obvious, 
and some of the things I've said already this evening uh, I will repeat. Um, for me, thinking kingdom and not some of the other ideas I used to work with, my limited understanding of, of, of salvation, getting saved, or of just going to heaven when I die, which seemed to be the goal of everybody, but it's never the goal in the Bible. Um, but thinking kingdom, I think, is one of the most practical things that we can do. Uh, I don't know if you, if you can think back to some of the stuff we talked about, some of the verses we've looked at. But if when we're preaching the gospel, when we are discipling people, helping people to understand, if we can keep on communicating this idea of being transferred from one kingdom to another, it's not some distant transaction at a border post somewhere. In here is different to out there. You can't keep saying, well, I had my passport, I showed the man at the border, but you're still living as if you're a Russian. Don't work. You're a Briton now. No offence to Russians, or Bulgarians. <laughs> um, do you know what I mean? Um, so I think that's one of the practical things. Um, it should, I believe, reshape the way that we pray. And it will help us, um, it will help us to um, think in a kingdom way rather than just an individualistic way that we will also realise that we're not praying to be taken out and gone, we're actually praying for God's kingdom to come. And when you look at like the end of Ezekiel and the end of the book of Revelation, it's not that God's people are rescued and taken away in Ezekiel or rescued and taken away in the book of Revelation. Both of them talk about uh, the dwelling place of God now rests with mankind. Mm -hmm. There's this coming of God here, which I think is staggering. Um, and when we come to the church in a few months' time, we'll, we'll look at that a bit more. Um, and how we pray about... Uh, I, I don't want to go into that here. Um, I think, as well, it should affect the way that we... We should think more, if I said corporately, more kingdomly rather than individually. Yeah. And I think that's crucial. Um, and it, it has been something that changed the change the way I live in my Christian life and understand my Christian faith, that this is a kingdom thing. Um, when it says, unless a man is born again, he won't see the kingdom. And that's seeing the kingdom. It's not just now. It is talking about the future. But it's, it's, it's not as if we're all just a collection of individuals, all just <coughs> you know, waiting to be fulfilled and have the real best life that we can now. And, um, you know, everything's individual. Me, 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 me. This is a kingdom thing. It's a kingdom thing. And, it's a, and, and I don't know whether I'm communicating it well. Perhaps some people are picking up on it more than others. But um, the other thing is that <coughs> if we're going to preach the kingdom, we are to expect what John Wimber used to call power encounters, clashes of the will of God, the rule of God, the reign of God in individual people's lives. And if they are not prepared to sit down and count the cost, then they're not going to be able to do it. If they imagine a whistler coming up and he realises, oh, wow, I found treasure, he thinks, ah, oh, I, I don't think I want to do that. Well, they have to walk away. And we are not to persuade them otherwise. All we have to do is pray this prayer. It's not all we have to do is pray this prayer. Mm -hmm. For that one rich man, he had to give up everything. Mm -hmm. And if, if someone in heart and mind is not prepared to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things won't be added to him. He can't be guaranteed his daily bread. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, there, is, there is a, because the kingdom of God is not a matter of words or talk, but power, if, if the, one of the practical impacts of kingdom is that we will move in faith and expect, because we are declaring the kingdom of God is here, to, to move out in power. And I don't want to really, I can't, I hate it when other people condemn everybody, but I'm, I'm just trying to say to all of us, and I, I have ebbed and flowed. I have ebbed and flowed in terms of power, right? There have been times in my Christian life when uh, I have felt so aware 
of the work of the Holy Spirit. That I remember someone walked up to me once, and this isn't a boast because it was a long time ago, it wasn't yesterday. Someone came up to me once and said, look, look, I, I want to know about the kingdom of God. And I said, I can see really clearly. I can see everything about you. And I told him some stuff. And he went white. And it wasn't because I, I knew him or I was trying to be manipulative. I just knew. I just knew. Mm -hmm. There was something happening. I was far, if you like, I, I was, there was more of the kingdom in operation uh, in me at that moment than at probably any other time. But there was a, a long period of time when that, that's happened. And I've ebbed and flowed. <coughs> the same with healing. I've seen healing ebb and flow um, in different congregations and in my life as well. The baptism in the Spirit, I think, is probably one of the earliest signs of uh, the, the, the kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. But you'd be surprised how many churches don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. They expect it to happen somewhere else in a big jamboree somewhere. And it's not a normal flowing part of the Christian life. And because I've prayed for so many people to be baptised in the Spirit, I know that it does take the effort of faith, if you know what I mean. Mm. You have to deliberately go out of your way and exercise faith mm. and speak faith into the person that they will receive the Holy Spirit. Not give them a push or mm. repeat after me the following words, I, I'll have a banana, I'll have a shandy and a banana. None of that. I mean real... <laughs> or Calagasita even, um, um, or, or, or just a real, genuine release of the Holy Spirit in someone's life. Because the kingdom of God is not uh, eating and drinking, it's not these silly rules and regulations that we can lay on people, it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, even though, in, from my view, as a non-Pentecostal background person, um, I think sometimes Pentecostals had the work of the Holy Spirit, but didn't. F this is only my perspective, so I'm not. Please, I'm, I'm not dragging anybody else into this. But they didn't put it in the right receptacle. It's like they didn't get the kingdom thing. But more and more now, I see that Pentecostals retaining uh, all their emphasis on the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and all those dynamic things are, are coming into a broader understanding of the kingdom of God, and it's healthier. It really is healthier. When I go to Zambia, I do try so hard to get the churches to understand uh, and move away from some of the initial stuff that they did. Not into less demons or less healing, but more demons and more healing, um, but with an understanding of the kingdom of God because it's much healthier than some of the ways that they've done it before. Um, and the, the fine, for me now, the, the final part of the, bene the practical benefit of the kingdom is that this, this idea of a now and not yet kingdom thing helps us in so many ways, particularly with healing and why aren't people healed. <coughs> uh, we know why people aren't healed because the kingdom of God hasn't come for you. We know God's will is for us all to live forever and us to have resurrected bodies. Well, that's not happened yet. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, we live in the tension of the now and the not yet. We rejoice at the joy of seeing the kingdom of God come in someone's body, in someone's life, and we uh, yearn and long for the time when fully the kingdom will come. And speaking in tongues, to tie this in with something else, speaking in tongues to me is this beautiful outbreaking of a little bit of the future where um, the languages of man that have broken us up the Holy Spirit reclaims by distributing to all different people. And so when we pray, uh, we are in tongues, or speak in tongues, uh, we are just holding on to that little sign, the deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. The Holy Spirit, who is that deposit, expressed so for most of us, not all, but most of us, through speaking in tongues, it's a bit like saying, I believe in the future, and I know it's going to happen. I just want to speak in tongues before we end on questions and answers and anything else to say, right? He andara hebarietro sandole heran, cura dondre mecite sale, he ambra batu trosere, kile dendre me trosere haye. Polorondro maetro sondole heye, 
Kiran. Kurarot roboche, lire trescende de vejan. Pororot romache, kire dendre me trescejan. Pororot romachare, kire dene treseran. I was praying. I was thanking God for um, the mercy of the signs of spring. I was thanking God for the indications that, are, that things are not the same forever. That there is a, a greater new day. There is greater sunshine. And there's a greater wholeness yet to come. And he has placed in our hearts this deposit and it's his guarantee, his guarantee, that he will put all things right and his kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, um, I could go off on a lot of tangents, but I don't want to do that because we can't do it. Um, some of the things I've written down here, I, I believe will, will help point people in the right direction. But anybody want to make any comments or particularly ask any questions or clarification? Ah. Yes, it, it is a personal thing really. Um, often when you know you walk in the town and you see some poor person who's um, crippled and in a wheelchair yeah. and sometimes the children and, and that and you think to yourself, Lord, you know, if only I could go like Jesus went and yeah. that person. Yeah and lay hands on me. And um, I don't know um, whether I'm waiting for God to say do it, or, or what, you know, because it, oh, yeah. it would be a, a, um, a tremendously disturbing thing to yeah. some people if you suddenly lay hands on them, which you're not supposed to do anyway. Uh, but it, it's just, um, you know, I, I, I really appreciate what you said about the kingdom and that we're part of the kingdom. And in that sense, have uh, the, the kingdom's authority to do mm. certain things. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's just knowing, you know, where you are and what, yeah. what, what you're doing. Yes, I, I think one of the things which doesn't help any of us is the pressure to think that everybody's going to be healed. Mm. Um, because in practical terms, we know that that's not true. Mm. And even the people who say that when they pray for people, we know it's not true. Um, the, the pre that pressure produces hype, produces fakery, um, produces a pressure which is just not part of the kingdom, you know. Um, and I remember I was in Zambia, one of my first trip to Zambia, and there was, there was a blind woman being led by a little child. Came and asked us for money, so we give some money. And I was with a guy called Steve Hepton, some of you know him. Steve looked at me and I looked at him and, I said, and he said, shall we? I said, what do you think? Oh, I know it's hard. I said, yeah, I know it's hard. And what, what we were not speaking was that should we go and pray for her to be healed? Mm -hmm. And we didn't. We didn't. But I have prayed for, for many people to be healed, and many haven't been. But I'm sure you have too, Anna, and you've seen some people here. And um, same here. And I think all we've got to do is listen to the Holy Spirit. But what we've also got to do is not abuse the people. You, I'm sure you know, you said it. You know full well that even though that does happen, you're not going to do it and we shouldn't do it. I'll, I'll ask permission sometimes. You know, once or twice people have said, no, I don't want to pray for you. That's fine. Uh, but I will say to them, I'll pray on my own, not with you. And I smile. And they go, yeah, I'll tell you to that. <laughs> um, and if, if, you know, once or twice, I have prayed for people on the street. And um, uh, provided we love them, because that's what it's about, mm -hmm. and then we're not strutting our stuff and thinking we're it, and it's for us, mm -hmm. all that sort of nonsense, um, we're all learning, mm -hmm. and we're not all there yet. Mm -hmm. I don't care who it is, even if they're big and on a stage, we're not all there yet. Mm -hmm. John, yeah, go so it's interesting that you mentioned John, John Wimber. I think he said you know, that they've prayed for years with people. Yeah. And then John said, all of a sudden, 
somebody got healed and all hell broke loose. Yeah. Or heaven broke loose. Well, I don't know what he did. I think he said hell. Uh, it, okay. it, brought, it brought real problems in yes. a sense because mm. they just weren't ready for the going to the paper, you know, all that wrong stuff yeah. that Rasmus yeah. has. It, yeah. I think he was a bit tongue in cheek, but it is interesting. You can imagine uh, if you prayed for a cripple in Swansea yeah. High Street, it'd be great. They got healed. They got healed. Yeah. The Evening Post and all sorts of stuff. It would be interesting. I, I must say, I remember I was doing door to door once. I was very young, and I take I took a new Christian who was older than me to do door to door. We all split into pairs. And so we went to this door, and um, this woman came, and she said, "Look, I'm, I can't stay too long. I've got my husband's ill." And she said, oh, we, 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 we can heal people as well. <laughs> I, just <laughs> oh, I, said, uh, I said, well, I haven't got time now to, to invite you in. Come, come again sometime. So we walked, great. And I remember saying to this girl that was with me, I said, uh, we, we don't do that. But in a funny sort of way, she was right. Mm-hmm. I think she did it wrong, but in a funny sort of way, she was right. And so, uh, I, you know, I can't remember who it was, no, but I, I remember that instant so well, because it filled me with horror, mm-hmm. the idea, because I'd only just been baptised in the Spirit, I didn't quite know all these things work and stuff. You can't go around telling people that we're going to pray for them to be healed. Yeah. Oh, yes, you can. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yes, you can. Sorry, anybody else want to say anything? George. Um, the kingdom of God, I said, isn't it within us, then? The kingdom of God, it, it, is within us because since we are to proclaim, I mean, is the kingdom of God comes and yeah. we, we all are involved in this kingdom, but isn't it within us? Yes, but more. Um, it, 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 well, um, I'm convinced Not Jesus Jesus didn't act, Jesus didn't actually yeah. say those words, yeah. right? But if you think about it, well, of course the kingdom of God is in us, yeah. but the problem is. If we may let that image dominate, because it doesn't dominate in the Gospels or in any other part of the New Testament, mm-hmm. we end up with a distorted understanding of the Kingdom of God. So, yes, but that's not where the emphasis is. The emphasis is on the Kingdom of God. And we enter the Kingdom of God in all the languages. We enter it, we live in it, we reach out for it. The Kingdom is going to come. There's going to be judgment, there's going to be restoration, there's going to be all sorts of stuff happening. And it's right, and but if we right. make it internal, yeah. we change it. Yeah. But, but if it's, as you mentioned, it, it's it also for the future as well, yeah? Now? But, but now, now, yeah. So I'm looking at it now, that since we are proclaim, proclaiming the good news and whatever it is, we, we actually have have the kingdom within us right now. But I, you said um, partially. Yeah. I'm not wanting to have an argument with my No, 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 no. Because <laughs> no, you'll sing at me. Okay, no, 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 but uh, the, reason, the reason why I'm being a little bit stubborn uh-huh. is that I think sometimes the language we use to explain something will, will change the way we understand that thing. And because of a mistranslation, the kingdom of God is in you, um, it's become almost like the dominant thing. You can go on and, and get books all about the kingdom of God being in you, and it, that's not what the emphasis is. If you, if you look at all the teaching of the kingdom of God, you don't get that emphasis. Yeah. Christ in you, the hope of glory, absolutely. But if we're trying to use this kingdom idea, uh, this kingdom emphasis and understanding, I would, I would try and help us not to keep thinking inside. I don't know if, has anybody getting me on that, or am I just, yeah, it, it, it could be easy to say that, that we actually, not the kingdom is within us, but we operate in within, the kingdom. within the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Do you understand? Know, so mm-hmm. we operate within the kingdom, which puts the emphasis more on the kingdom yeah. rather than us being the centre of the universe almost. Absolutely. Well, yeah. oh, I know you didn't mean that. Right. Yeah. Any, anybody else? Can you elaborate just briefly on <coughs> kingdom and society and probably explain what are the implications of understanding kingdom perspective yeah. and how that will affect society, <coughs> i.e. us yeah. um, ushering that kingdom into society? Okay. I'll, I'll add one or two things into that as well. The, the, 
the um, liberals who generally lose faith in the essentials of the gospel will often emphasize uh, doing good things in society. Extreme evangelical fundamentalists uh, will preach the gospel, perhaps in a very limited way, but they will not do much for society. Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians, but they're an example of that type of thing. You'll never find a Jehovah's Witness orphanage, um, a clinic, hospital. We don't find many charismatic such. Yeah, nothing like that. Now, um, in terms of us affecting society and being salt and light and all those sorts of things, um, us living in the society that we do will have, and it depends on what type of society is. I'll give an example. In the first century, the society was very it was similar to where we're going. Mm. Not Africa, partly America, but where we are going, Europe, right? Within a decade or two, we will be ex pretty well exactly where the first century was. Church was on the fringe. So they, they uh, did good to all people, but especially the family of believers. So they, their churches became beacons of something so much better than the society was. We have, we, we're in a sort of a reverse situation where the society that we, we are in has been affected by Christianity for many, many years. We've been sought, we've been liked. They don't recognize it, they don't appreciate it. And when it's gone, they realize it's gone and they won't know what to do about it. But as, we can, as Christians continue just to live for God, and it's not just church, uh, we do demonstrate and, and show the kingdom of God. Um, I, I said to someone the other day, if you're in Swansea and you're down and out, uh, and it's cold and it's winter, churches will put you up. Uh, if you've been stupid and you get drunk on a Saturday night and you're lying in a gutter, someone will pick you up, put you in a taxi, or take you home. <coughs> if you uh, are down and out, or if you're down on your luck, or if you're unemployed, and you haven't got any money, and you can't afford food, you can go to a food bank. Mm -hmm. And Christians, and it will be Christians, will, will serve you that. All these things, not specifically church, but they would broadly fall under the, the banner of kingdom. I don't know if I've answered Diane's question, but I'm also aware that we're sort of at the end of the, uh, the time that we've got. And I think Mr. Jackson wants to say something. Uh, you don't want to speak in any tongues. Jesus said, said to his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem until he be endured with power from an eye. God never intended the church but to go on in his own power. The initial evidence, as we know, is speaking in tongues to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Acts 1 8 says this He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. And he was from every tribe, every nation there, when they Cappadocia, Bithynia, and so forth and that. But the main thing is really, yeah, it is, for if we speak in unknown tongues, the Bible said that we speak it in, minis uh, in mysteries. So if somebody said, to you, hey, we're going on a mystery trip. We're good. We don't know. We speak it in mysteries, but either speak it in an unknown tongue, speak it direct unto God. And the Bible says that when we speak in unknown tongues, the Bible declares that we edify it ourselves. Mm. And I see it, the main thing is being baptized in the Holy Ghost because it was there in Jerusalem and it was to spread the word. And God said to wait in Jerusalem until he be endued with power from an eye. So I see it yet, it's very important for speaking unknown tongues. It is, it's important. 
but also there's that as regards it. It's the evidence I'd have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, but God wants to empower us, not for to go forward in our strength, but in the strength and the power of God. Mm -hmm. And perhaps I could just read this couple of verses there, if you don't mind, you know, right? Okay. Right, okay. It's, it's Romans 8. We, we've heard about, the, about us as regards of the, 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 the kingdom of God, and, and I believe that this is something to do as regards what, what the earth really. It says, starting from verse 20, uh, and say so read up to 20, so only a couple of verses. For the creature is made subject to vanity, not willingly to be reasoned by him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which are the first fruits of spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he hope yet? It's a glorious it's, it, it, would you say that was as regards even the earth <coughs> was in as regards because the earth is cursed isn't it yeah 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 but it will be liberated from that you see indeed yeah. okay I am um, I hope you found tonight helpful yeah. when, when I first thought about the kingdom I did um, uh, a month series uh, of these Mm -hmm. So, I sort of compressed, really, but we're not doing four months on the Kingdom of God, we're doing one night, two yeah. hours. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know that um, next time, even though it's, you know, I'm surprised when I say this, even though heaven and hell are not major biblical themes, because they're not, uh, we're doing them next time, because they are issues which a lot of people think are really, really important. And, and I think we, we, we might have some surprises next time as well. And the time after that, we're going to look at the, the end of all things. And that's not the end of the series, because we're going to relook at other stuff later on in the year, gifts of the Spirit and church and some other stuff. But so it's heaven and hell next month and uh, the, the end, which is the month after. I'll be your bodyguard next month. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you might, you. might need to be my bodyguard a month after as well. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you.